Okay, in this tutorial we're going to look at working with strokes to create really interesting outline effects. It's a little bit of a complex process in Illustrator. One of the things you're going to have to keep a very close eye on is the appearance palette under Window and Appearance. I'm just going to turn it off and turn it back on so we can draw our attention to it. It just pops out over here. We're going to keep our eye on the appearance palette because there's a lot of things that can go on in there. It's actually possible to give an object or a set of objects more than one stroke using the appearance palette. That sounds really odd, so let's just take a look at it on a brand new empty document. We'll start by just creating a circle. Right now the circle's got a fill of white and a stroke of black, which as you know, we can go and we can modify using the stroke palette, for example, increase the stroke weight, or using the color palette, change the color of the fill. However, if we want, we can also go into the appearance palette, and we can control the stroke and the fill there. So here you can see I stroke and my fill. If I want to change the fill color, I can click on it. It brings up a standard color picker, and I can just choose a new fill color right there. And then I can go in here, and if I wanted to, I could play with my stroke weight right there. What becomes really interesting is when you add, start adding multiple strokes and multiple fills to an object. Multiple fills isn't anywhere near as useful, at least not that I've found, but multiple strokes, there's a ton of things that we can do with them. Most specifically, we can add that bubble or outline effect to an object by simply adding a new stroke. Adding a new stroke is quite easy when we're in the appearance palette. I'm just going to split that away so it's a little more clear and bring that, close that up a bit. Nobody wants to see graphic styles. Okay, there's my appearance palette. In this little pull-down fly-out menu here, we can just say, add a new stroke. Okay, we're just adding a new stroke. Let's choose a new stroke color, just to make it really obvious. Now that stroke is exactly the same size as the stroke that sits below it. So we don't actually see a second stroke. This stroke sits over top, just like in the layers palette, this is over top of that stroke, so we can't see the black stroke anymore since the red stroke is the same size and sits over top. Now if I reduce the size of the red stroke, you can now see I get a black stroke on either side, and that's because I've got the red stroke sitting on top. The red stroke is thinner, sits on top of the black stroke that's thicker, and so we get the appearance of having black and then red and then another black stroke. So it actually looks like three strokes, but it's only two. If you wanted to work the other way around, we could either change these two colors around, or what we can do, we can increase the width of the stroke of the red stroke. And just by clicking and dragging, we can change the stacking order and drag that stroke underneath the other one. So now we've got the red stroke sitting underneath the black stroke. Things become more interesting if we also take the fill and drag the fill above everything else so the fill is on top. So now we have the fill and then the black stroke and then the red stroke poking through and we can then just adjust it like that. So very simply we can get multiple strokes happening on a simple object using the appearance palette. The appearance palette becomes an extremely powerful tool. So now let's take and look at our little logo here that we've got. Now one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to take our text and immediately outline it. It's going to be a lot easier if we outline the type for what we're going to do. Now having said that, it's not necessary to use to outline the type in order to use this technique. It just it just in this particular example is going to work well. The other thing that's going to work really well is to fuse all of these letters together. As you can see, each one of these letters right now is kind of a separate letter. It's going to be a nice little uh, helpful thing if we fuse the letters together using our Pathfinder menu. Window, Pathfinder, really powerful palette, and we're going to use the Unite to fuse those all together. After you've done a Unite, it's a good idea to deselect your letters and just take a look and make sure none of the holes have filled in or anything weird has happened. Sometimes Unite can create results like that. So you want to just double check your type and make sure everything's okay. Alright, that looks like it worked really well. So that was by selecting all of the text and then converting it to outlines and then choosing Pathfinder Unite.
Okay, so now we've got one line of type. Let's actually bubble that type out. So what we really want is we want to have white type with a black bat border. That's really easy to achieve by using our default hotkey. The letter D on our keyboard automatically sets the fill to white and the stroke to black. And now all we need to do is just go to the stroke palette and we can adjust our stroke width and we can see the results there. Now one of the problems when you're outlining type, even if it's just a simple outline like this, take a look at what happens to my, the thickness of my letters as I increase the stroke. Because the stroke generally sits along the middle of the line, the middle of the path, when you increase the stroke size, it grows outward, but it also grows inward as well, and that eats into the letter shape itself. And so you, the letters become harder and harder to read as you do that. So it's actually something that you really want to try to avoid as much as possible. One of the ways of avoiding that is simply by using uh, the, the appearance palette instead of, uh, instead of just adding a stroke to the object. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set our stroke to none. And we're going to go into the, we're going to select the object, we're going to go into the appearance, so let's just fly that back out. And we're going to go and do, when you look at the appearance of this object, which has been grouped together, so let's make sure it's been grouped. So it's been grouped when we did the unite, it's all grouped together. In order to actually modify and add this, we have to work on the group itself. So here we have the group, and what we can do is now we can add a fill to the group and add a stroke to the group itself, which will replace the stroke or the fill of the individual elements within that group. And that's going to be really helpful for us. So we're going to add a new fill just to make sure we got a nice white fill in there. And then we're going to set the stroke to black by just editing it from the, the color fly out. And again, well, let's increase that stroke width. We're having the same problem as before, so what we want to do is we want to put the stroke behind the fill. So with the fill in front of the stroke, we'll only see the outside portion of the stroke. And so now you can set that stroke pretty much as wide as you want, and you're never going to lose legibility on the type. We can go as high as 12 points here. We're getting a little bit of an artifact, which we'd have to clean up be beforehand. Uh, but otherwise, it's really working out nicely to just increase that the edge of that font without eating into the inside and making it illegible. This little nick that we're seeing here is caused by some extraneous paths. If we look at that, there's just uh, one of these anchors is causing that thing to spike up as Illustrator does its magic. We'd have to play around with this a little bit to see how to get rid of that. We'd need to simplify this shape. Maybe we can we can try to select these points here and run a simplify object path simplify with the preview turned on let's see if anything comes of that well that looks like it's definitely simplified and removed all those extraneous points from it let's see if that helps get rid of the object net no, doesn't really do it so we'll have to we'd have to dig deeper in that one it's something that's built into the font presumably has something to do with a miter not really sure if it's coming from it's probably actually coming from that point right there as a matter of fact so let's just take a quick look at that point the shape here we're going to look at our stroke one of the neat things you can do is you can bring up the stroke panel for this particular stroke in the appearance so if we click on that we get the stroke panel and one of the things we want to look at here is our miter limit on the corner that's a ten times miter which allows things to get really really pointy so if we want to avoid that we can either set our caps to bevel, you see that immediately got rid of the spike, or we can simply reduce the miter limit, which is simply there even by taking it down to nine, or let's take it down to six to be on the safe side, just tells Illustrator you're not allowed to extend the point when we increase the stroke size to that point where it becomes ten times longer than the original, or ten times further out than the original point. That's what the miter limit does. So that solved that problem pretty handily without having to go and edit any of the points. So the simplify was actually a red herring because that had nothing to do with the problem. The problem was actually this point here on the counter of the A. All right, let's zoom back out. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to create yet another layer of stroke going outward again. So to do that, 
there's a number of techniques. We can create a number of strokes here, right here at this level, and add more and add more as, as much as we want. But what will happen is that Illustrator does remember that these objects are three, four separate groups. Super, collegial, slumber, princess, and presumably the exclamation mark, are all going to be separate groups. And so there's going to still be a stacking order there. So what we want to do is we want to avoid that. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Control or Command C. So I've just copied it, or edit, copy, just so that you can see what I'm doing. Control C. And that's just got a copy of that in the clipboard. That way, I can modify this to my heart's content, and then I'll just simply paste the original right back over top. As long as I don't mem remember not to copy anything else, I should be good. One of the other things that you can do in the appearance palette is you can leverage anything that's in the effects menu, at least in the top part of the effects menu. And what we want over here is we want to look at path, effect, path, and offset path. That's going to allow us to actually make the path bigger. And you can see here we're running offset path on that shape. So that's made the path, that's bubbled the path out even further. Let's go and make sure we're doing this right. We've got the offset path set inside the stroke. I think that's because I had the stroke selected. So I'm going to take the offset path, and I'm going to move it all the way out to the group level to make sure the offset path is affecting both the fill and the stroke. I really want the fill to expand as well. What you can see is that creates kind of like a bubble around all the letters without cutting into each other. So where they intersect, they actually just sort of join up. That's a really nice feature. And I can, this is interactive, eh? if I select this, and click on offset path and I can just I'm using my arrow keys here as long as preview is turned on yeah, you can see with your cursor inside there you can just click the up and down arrow and you can just sort of see what it would look like here we get rid of all the stuff in the inside I'm not sure I like that I kinda like having almost like clouds that might look actually pretty cool right there so we'll leave it at 15 points seems to work out now, as I mentioned before, we still have a copy of the original sitting in the clipboard, so all we have to do is paste it back. Now, if I press Control V to paste it, it's going to paste it, but it may paste it offset. It might be sort of somewhere. You can see it's been offset here. That's not what we want. We're going to use Paste in Front, Command F, to paste it in the exact same position in front of the current artwork. So I'm going to just deselect. Now you can see we really have a nice double outline happening over here. And one of the challenges that you're going to run into is selecting that second outline again. Because if we, we can't really click on it out here, that doesn't exist out there. Even though it looks like the line is out here, the actual shape is down back down here. Now we have to be really careful which shape is it that we're clicking on here. You have to sometimes move things out of the way. If you're having trouble getting at the shape underneath, for example, I want to maybe change the color of the, the stroke uh, from black, or maybe I want to change the color of that, that fill in there, you, you, sh you, you, you can do a couple of things, but probably the easiest thing is to simply hide this layer. So if we've determined that the layer I've clicked on is actually the layer in front, the smaller of the two layers, Command 3 is going to hide that temporarily, allow me then to click on this layer, get back to it, and do whatever I want to do with it. And then Command Option 3 will just simply bring that back. But actually, you know, if you look at this, what we really want to do here, to be honest, super collegial, slumber, princess, really, truly, honestly, needs to be pink, doesn't it? And there we go. To finish this sucker off, I don't normally condone this kind of behavior in Illustrator, but I think that what we really need to do here is we need to take that outer shape, and we need to go back to the effects and throw on another effect. We're going to throw on a drop shadow. I honestly don't believe that drop shadows have a very strong position in Illustrator. I think they really should belong to Photoshop and that kind of raster stuff, because this is actually deceiving. This is a raster effect that's being applied in Illustrator, and it's not vector. It will not scale. So you do, really, there's no place for that. But given that we're doing this crazy logo, we should really apply a drop shadow to this particular object. And then Command Option 3 will bring back our lovely pink text. Last touch, select all, maybe do a little offset here. Giddy up.